who's your daddy? We finished up with that. And then last week we talked about, since we talked about who's your daddy, we talked about this spiritual paternity test that we can kind of take and kind of put ourselves through to find out if we're really truly acting and living like a child of God or if we're really truly acting and living like a child of the devil, which hopefully you guys can all say a child of God. Hopefully you can say God is your daddy. Um, last week we covered uh, birthmarks, the battle of birthmarks, birthmarks that let you know if you are born of, born again, born of God, um, or if you're not. And so um, that leads us into today, today's lesson. We're call, I'm calling today's lesson, it's a simple, it's an easy, um, kind of boring title, uh, but <laughs> Mike Shelley is your daddy. Yeah. Um, so today's not as catchy of a title. I mean, it kind of is, but because we use this a lot, this is actually a hymn that we sing sometimes. Um, and I've used it too when it, when talking about uh, getting off of this. Um, so we talk about getting off of your blessed assurance. Say amen if you've ever heard of that. Um, I've actually mentioned that in a, some sermons. And so Basically, last week we talked about what it's like to get off of your blessed assurance and live out your faith and live out the love that God has in your heart that God has given you. Um, and so today we're talking about the blessed assurance that you can have because of getting off of your blessed assurance. So, um, so anyway... We're going to be in 1 John chapter 3. We're going to start in verse 18. I, we covered verse 18 a little bit last week, um, but it's just too good not to cover again. So I'm going to go back and cover it again and then get through the rest of chapter 3. So, but knowing who, knowing who is your daddy and knowing which birthmarks you have and knowing that your love is motivated by truth over just words and knowing that your love is motivated, motivated by action over just speech, knowing these things enables you to have blessed assurance. And I have three quick points that I'm going to get to, um, three quick things that you can, that you can know that you can have, uh, because of the birthmarks and because of knowing who your daddy is. So if you're, uh, if you're there, I'm going to go ahead and pray because I'm going to cover the, the scripture as we go, um, instead of reading it all at first. So, um, if you guys are ready to jump in, say amen, and then go ahead and just bow in prayer with me. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you so much for this day, Lord. I thank you for your word. I thank you for um, just the truths that we can pull out of your word and that we can apply to our lives, Lord. Um, this section is a little bit difficult, but it's still truths that are in your word. Um, and so I pray that as we study the word, as we read your word, that your Holy Spirit mixes with your word and that... Um, hearts are prepared out there right now for everybody watching this. I pray a special blessing over everybody watching this, and I pray that they prepare their hearts right now to receive a word from you, Lord. Um, let me decrease and let you increase. Let you, I pray that you take my foolish words and you use them in a way that only you can use them, Lord. I give you all glory, honor, and praise, and it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And the dog said amen, too. Um, so anyway, let me start reading. So verse... Starting in verse 18. Verse 18 says, Little children, we must not love with word or speech, but with truth and action. This is how we will know that we belong to the truth and will convince our conscience in his presence. Even if our conscience condemns us that God is greater than our conscience and he knows all things. So you guys can kind of see how this is a little bit complicated. Um, Hang on just a second. I'm going to turn the light. I know this is weird, but I forgot to turn the light on. There we go. Okay, so the first thing that we have to remember, um, that we, if, if you remember back to last week, is that we must love in not just with word or speech, but with truth and action. And so... Um, you have to know that your love is motivated by truth, motivated by truth over just words. Now we can say we can speak love and we can talk about love and we can say that we love people, but a lot of times those are just words coming out of people's mouths. And so that's why John says that it has to be truth, truth and action. And then you also also have to know that your love is motivated by action over just speech. Um, and so that's 
we, t we covered this last week, um, a little less talk and a lot more action. That's what we need when it comes to living out our faith and living out our love, um, is to just show that it's action over just speech. It's just vain words, just empty words um, don't mean anything. What really matters is showing people, okay? And so when you realize all of this stuff, when you realize, when you put yourself through this spiritual paternity test and you, you figure out um, that God, you know, that you are born, uh, born again and born a child of God, um, then you can have these three assurances, okay? Number one is you can be confident in his presence, Number one is you can be confident in his presence. That will, that's what we see here was, uh, in verse 19. It says, this is how we will know we belong to the truth and will convince our conscience in his presence. Even if our conscience condemns us that God is greater than our, that God is greater than our conscience and he knows all things. So the first thing is you can have confidence that he, confidence in his work in us. Um, our conscience sometimes needs convincing is the problem is sometimes all of this is really talking about making sure that you're that you don't doubt because even once we become saved and even once we um become a christian and we give our life to christ um then if you don't live out these things all of this points to verse 18 and verse uh verse 16 through 18 is the love in action and and applying our faith to our walk doing the action is what it all applies to. So sometimes our conscience gets to where we need convincing, um, and we can rely on the Holy Spirit to help with that. Um, His Spirit helps convince us. In Romans chapter 8, verse 16, it says, The Spirit Himself testifies together with our spirit that we are God's children. Um, and that's such a great blessing, is that knowing that His Holy Spirit comes along with us, uh, comes along and... Uh, testifies together with our spirit um so in the times that we get to where we doubt we can know and we can trust in the holy spirit that um it will come along and it will basically bring us together with god um and let us know and 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 clear our conscience give us that blessed assurance give us that confidence in his presence um we can also know that there's no condemnation in him um and that's what we see in uh Verse 20, even if our conscience condemns us that God is greater, even if our conscience condemns us, we can know that God is greater than our conscience and he knows all things. Um, and this is one of my favorite verses in, in Romans, Romans chapter 8, verses 1 and 2. It says, therefore, now no condemnation now exists for those in Christ Jesus because the Spirit's law of life in Christ Jesus has set you free, free from the law of sin and death. And so anytime that condemnation Anytime your spirit, your heart, the, the word for that they use for conscience here is that like your innermost being. Okay, so that's why it says conscience. Some translations say heart. It's what is the what's at the core of you. So sometimes when you leave it up to yourself and you leave it up to your own ability, um, our core, our conscience, our heart can start to sort of like condemn ourselves. Okay, and so we have to remember by the Holy Spirit that there's no condemnation in Christ Jesus. He set us free from all of that stuff. We don't have to be bound by the chains and the law of sin and death because he set us free, okay? Now, there's a difference. Um, there's a difference between con condemnation and conviction, okay? It's okay for us to feel conviction, but it's not okay to feel condemnation, not to feel condemned by your actions, okay? So condemnation, I have a couple of, I have the definitions for these two right here. Condemnation is a strong disapproval or a sentence to a punishment. That's what we don't have to deal with. When our hearts and our, our conscience starts to condemn us to where it says you're not worthy, you're not worthy of the grace that God gave, you're not worthy of, the, of Jesus dying on the cross for you, um, that's when you have to, that's when you have to get with the Holy Spirit and let the Holy Spirit convince you that there's no condemnation. You, you're, you're worthy because Jesus made you worthy. You're not worthy on your own, but you're worthy because of the blood sacrifice of Jesus. Okay. Now, conviction is what we are supposed to feel, and it is what we are supposed to have. Okay. Conviction just simply means being made aware that one is guilty. 
being made aware that one is guilty. I keep looking back here because the kids are back here, just so you guys know, because I'm making sure they're paying attention. Um, but And they are. Say amen, guys. Amen. Okay. So conviction simply means being made aware that one is guilty. Okay, and that we need so much in our lives. And that is something else that the Holy Spirit helps with. The Holy Spirit actually convicts us. And when you're relying on the Holy Spirit, then that is when you should feel the conviction, being made aware that you're not in step with God, made aware that you're um, not doing something that you should be doing or doing something that you shouldn't be doing. And then you can get with Him, and the Holy Spirit helps you to get it right. Okay? When you start feeling condemnation, that's not a sign of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit does not condemn us. The Holy Spirit doesn't make us feel like we're, uh, that we deserve, um, de deserve death or deserve uh, a punishment from God or something like that. Um, that. That's what we should not feel. Okay? And that's what he's talking about here is when, when we don't live out faith and we don't live out the love um, then we can start to get to where we feel that condemnation. But we have to remember that there's no condemnation in Christ, okay? God's grace is greater than our guilt. God's grace is greater than our guilt. Say that. Everybody say that. God's grace is greater than our guilt. Okay. So we have to remember that, okay? Um, and then we can also have confidence in his knowledge of us. And this is a good. This can be a good thing and a bad thing because he knows you better than you know yourself. Okay, and so we find it. We find that where it says right here um, that God is greater than our conscience and He knows all things. So if you're basically what this means is if you are right with God and you've given your life to Him and you know that you know that you know that you're a child of God, that God is your daddy, okay, and you have the birthmarks of it, and you live out your love, you live out the love, and you live out your faith, um, then when that condemnation starts to creep in, God knows your true heart, okay, and that you can find so much uh, faith in and so much um, peace in, is that he knows your true heart, and that's, we find this we find this exact same thing, this exact same word, uh, in the life of Peter. Okay, if you guys remember Peter, Peter denied Christ three times when he was on the cross, right? You guys know that, right? Peter denied Christ three times, and so when Jesus was resurrected, he came back and he was visiting all the people. He was appearing to all the people that he appeared to. He appeared to Peter as well, okay? And in his appearance to Peter, he actually restored Peter three times. So Peter denied him three times. He restored Peter three times. And in this restoration of Peter, we find in John chapter 21, verse 17, it says, Jesus, this is talking about Jesus. He asked him a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was grieved that he asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. We find that knowledge of God, just how much God knows our hearts and our conscience in what Peter says right there. If you can boldly proclaim, Lord, you know me, you know that I love you, then you can have this blessed assurance. You can have this confidence in his knowledge of us, okay? Um, so the second thing that we can find, that we can get from this blessed assurance is we can be courageous in his presence, okay? And so we find that um, starting in verse 21. It says, Dear friends, if our conscience doesn't condemn us, we have confidence before God and can receive whatever we ask from him because we keep his commands and we do what is pleasing in his sight. So we can be courageous in his presence, and we can be courageous to confess to him. So when you realize that... Um, the condemnation starts to creep in, but um, you realize that it's not condemnation, but it's really conviction. It's the Holy Spirit working on you. Um, and you realize that you are out of step with God, but you need to get back into step with God because that's what the Holy Spirit does. Um, then this blessed assurance, knowing that you live out your faith and live out your love, can give you a courageousness in his presence to confess to him. Okay, we are When we're confident in his knowledge of us, 
we have the freedom to confess to him. And that's a big freedom to have, to confess to him, okay? Because you know what? He already knows. He already knows. He already knows your sin. He knows your sin before you're going to commit it. And so we should be able to have this blessed assurance to come to him and be bold to him and confess whatever it is, okay? There's no point in trying to hide anything from God. There's not. We can try to hide sins from each other, but there's no point in trying to hide anything from God because he already knows. He actually knows the deeper meaning, the deeper heart of whatever sin it is. So you might as well just get it all out there in the open to God and just confess it. That's a courageousness that we can have in him is to confess to him, okay? And he already knows. He already sympathizes with it. That's the cool thing. Hebrews chapter 4 verses 15 through 16 says, For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has been tested in every way as we are, yet without sin. Therefore, therefore, and I love this therefore, let us approach the throne of grace with boldness so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us at the proper time. That is the complete courageousness and boldness that we have to have to approach the throne of grace with boldness so that we can receive, we can ask for mercy, we can ask for grace, we can ask for forgiveness. And he is faithful to give it to us at the proper time because we can approach the throne with courageousness and with boldness. Um, and so not only that, not only the courageousness to ask him for, to confess to him, but the courageousness to ask him for things. It says there that we can approach the throne of grace with boldness, that we may receive mercy and find grace at the proper time. But we can also, if, when you're in step with him, when you are a child of his and you are, um, you are living out his, your faith in him and you're living out his love, you're in his will. See, a lot of, all of these points they have something in common, which I'm going to get to here in, in the last uh, point. But it has to do with being in his presence, okay? They all have to do with being in his presence. And so when you're in his presence, you can have the courageousness, you can have the boldness to ask him for things. And that's what he says there. He says, <clears throat> dear friends, if our conscience doesn't condemn us, we have confidence before God and can receive whatever we ask from him. Because we keep his commands and do what is pleasing in his sight. We, we can have that confidence. We can have that courageousness to ask him. Because he's faithful. He says that. That we can receive whatever we ask from him. Because we keep his commands. Now that's not just a license to ask him for whatever. There's some stipulations of that. That's like, um, that's like a, a child coming to you asking if they can have a snack. Because our kids come and ask if they can have snacks all the time. Um, and you know, there's a, there's a, a point in time in the afternoon that they have snacks anyway, but this is somebody that, like, just imagine a kid coming and asking for a treat, okay? Asking for a cookie or asking for some a piece of candy or some ice cream or something like that. Um, they can, they don't have the confidence to come and ask knowing that they don't deserve it and expect to receive it, okay? Now, there's some stipulations with that. It says, because we keep his commands and do what is pleasing in his sight. That's how you can have the courageousness to approach God and to receive whatever you ask for. It's only because of those stipulations. So that kid, that child that can come, that comes and asks for a treat or asks for a snack or whatever, um, maybe you might say, is your room clean? Is your room clean, guys? <laughs> um, maybe you might say, is your room clean? If your room is clean, then you can have a snack, you can have a treat, you can have some ice cream. Maybe we need to take that and apply that to, to you guys. No? They're saying no. Um, but that's kind of what, that's kind of like the idea here, okay? If we stay, if we stay keeping his commands and doing what is pleasing in his sight, then you can have the courageousness, you can have the blessed assurance, you can have the boldness to approach the throne and ask for whatever. And he's faithful to give it, but you have to have those, you have to be keeping those stipulations. Okay. Amen. Um, God is gracious in his giving, but you have to be gracious in your giving. Mm. Let me say that again. God is gracious in his giving, but you have to be gracious in your giving to him. Amen. That's giving of your time, giving of your talents, giving of your money, giving of your efforts, giving of your faithfulness. You have to be gracious to giving to him and he will be gracious to giving to you. Okay. Um, and so that brings us to the third point, the final point. You have, we can have the blessed assurance of being connected in his presence. 
okay? And that's what we find in verse 23 and 24. It says, now this is his command, that we believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as he commanded us. The one who keeps his commands remains in him and he in him. And the way we know that he remains in us is from the spirit that he's given us. So we can have the blessed assurance. We can have the, the confidence that we are connected in his presence. That's the person that lives out this command to love one another, to love him first above all else and love each, love your neighbor as yourself. When you live out that command, <laughs> they're saying amen every time I look back at them now. <laughs> when you live out that command, that's what he says. Now this is his command, that we believe in the name, so we love God above all else, and we love one another as he commanded us. And when you do that, you can have the assurance, the blessed assurance, that you are connected in his presence. Okay, And so there's some, there's some things here about being in his presence that I wanted to point out real quick before we get into some practical application. Okay, So... In his presence, there's four things, four ways that you can know that you're in his presence. Four ways that you can be in his presence, okay? Number one is you can be in his presence by being in his work. In his work. That is by loving sacrificially and serving. A serving love and a sacrificial love, just like we talked about in verses 16 through 18. That's how you can be in, connected in his presence, by being in his work. Okay? You can be connected in his presence by being in his ways, by being in his ways, by obeying his commands and doing what is pleasing. That's what it says in verse uh, 22, like we talked about, the way that you can uh, be courageous to ask for things, okay? Because we keep his commands and we do what is pleasing in his sight. That is being in his ways, okay? Then you can also be, you, you can be connected in his presence by being connected in his will, and that is by doing the things that he tells you to do, by seeking him in prayer, by seeking his will for your life, and not only seeking his will for your life, because we can all, we, we all uh, do a pretty good job of asking for his will in our life and, and for asking for, for what he would have us do. But when it comes down to it is, will you do what he asked you to do? Will you do his will? Instead of just seeking his will, will you do his will? And so when you do his will, then you can be connected in his presence by being in his will. And then the last thing, the last way to be connected in his presence is by being connected in his word. Okay? And that is the way you, that's the way you hear from God is by being in his word. By being in prayer and being in tune with him and meditating. Read the word. First pray about what you're going to read then read the word, and then sit and meditate and let him speak to you through what you just read, okay? And that, we hope that that, we hope that the life to go, um, the digging deeper into your Bible study that's out there available um, on our Facebook page, um, it's going to help you guys do this because that's how you do it. You, you pray about it, you read his word, and then you meditate and you can ask you those questions you can ask those questions to help you meditate and help you dig deeper into it okay um so those are the four ways now you have to be in his in his to be in connected in his presence to be fully connected and be assured that you're remaining in him and that he's remaining in you it has to be all four of those ways being in his work being in his ways being in his will and being in his word okay then you can be assured that you're connected in his presence okay and so um, a lot of this has to do with dealing with doubt. Um, that's what we, the first part of what we were talking about. This, this whole section right here is about being confident, okay? Being confident in his presence, being confident in your relationship with him. And so sometimes we may deal with doubt. And so I'm going to, I just wanted to go over like some practical principles for dealing with doubt, just in case anybody out there is watching this or may watch this at a future time that may doubt your salvation, or doubt your relationship with God. Um, and this kind of hits home a little bit because um, last week, last Wednesday, after we got done with Bible study, there's actually um, a, a guy that is a lead singer for a popular Christian band. Um, his name is John Steingard. Um, I think that's how you say his last name. But he's he was the lead singer for Hawk Nelson, but I'm pretty sure he's not now um, because last Wednesday he went to Instagram and basically denounced his faith in Jesus. Um, and it has to do, I think it so much has to do with 
the fact that he was doubting his relationship because it was so focused. He grew up in a Christian home. Um, but I, it sounds to me by just, I don't know for sure, but it sounds to me just by the things that he said that it has to do, his bring, upbringing had more to do with religion than it did a relationship. And so when you're upbringing or when you when your walk has to more to do with a religion than a relationship then you can find yourself in a sp downward spiral of doubt and that's where he found himself and he actually went to Instagram and denounced his faith um, and so I if somebody out there is dealing with this um, I hope that you can find these principles helpful because um, I thought they were pretty good um, and and even if you're not even even if you're not even if you're just struggling with um, maybe not feeling as connected to God as you should, as you feel like you should, um, maybe these will help you too, okay? So the first thing, practical principles with dealing with doubt. First thing you have to do is you have to find the root of your doubt. You have to find the root of it. Identify the underlying cause, okay? And so there's some things that might, that might be. It might be um, intellectual challenges to your faith. That's actually what the guy that I'm talk, talking about, the lead singer for Hot Nelson, that's what his... His issue was was he, and this is probably the most of everybody. Okay, most everybody that that deals with doubt in their faith um, is it's because of intellectual challenges. Someone said something that made you question your faith, or you just want to know why. You want to get to the the bottom of the answers of everything, and that's the thing about faith is faith is not seeing. Faith is having a complete confidence in what you can't see. And so, if you get to where you know the answers to everything, then that's not true faith. Okay, so. That may be one of the underlying causes. Another underlying cause may be emotional baggage. Um, are you having believe? Are you having trouble believing in God because you had a bad relationship with your earthly father and you don't know how to receive love from a heavenly father, um, and you're unwilling to trust a heavenly father? Or maybe it's a relationship that you had with somebody that was supposedly uh, a Christian or supposedly in the church, and they did you wrong and they hurt you. Um, I'm sorry for that because that's not the way that we should be. Um, but that could be a reason why that could cause somebody to doubt their belief, doubt their relationship, okay? Um, another thing would be arrogance. Some people are just so proud that they cannot trust God uh, because if they believe God, they would have to adopt a position of humility, which they're unwilling to do. Um, and so that can cause uh, some serious doubt in somebody's relationship with, with God, with Christ. Um, it could be a spiritual lostness. It is possible that you can doubt your standing with God because you have never put your full tra trust in Jesus for salvation. Um, that would be the biggest thing. <laughs> if, and if you realize that that is the, the underlying cause, then we need to get that right immediately because that, um, until you get that right, until you get your re relationship with Jesus right and you realize what Jesus did for us on the cross, then you'll never get over that doubt and you'll never be as connected to God as you should, as you could be, okay? Um, and then there's sin. Are you hiding behind uh, doubt as a defense mechanism so that you won't have to deal with some personal sin? Um, and we all, I think we all kind of deal with this some to an extent, is we all have uh, personal sin in our lives that we want to keep hidden from others. Um, and so sometimes we can kind of get to where you think that you're keeping it hidden from others and that really means that you think you're keeping it hidden from God, but you're not. God knows. But that can be a serious hindrance on our relationship with God. That can cause doubt, and that can cause you to not be as connected to him as you, you, you could be and you should be. Um, and so you have to get that confessed. You have to have that boldness and that courageousness to confess it because he already knows, like we talked about earlier. And then it could be a personal crisis. Has your faith been rocked by circumstances you don't understand? It could be um, a personal thing. Somebody close to you died or somebody, or you're going through a hard time for some reason and um, you've tried your best to live a life pleasing to God and you think you do a good job and for some reason it just seems like um, the devil is constantly knocking at your door. Well, that could mean that you're actually doing good for the kingdom because that's when Satan attacks is when you're doing the most good for the kingdom. Okay, um, and so you have to. It could be a refining thing. It could be get growing your faith in Him, um, and so um, once you realize, once you figure out what the underlying cause is, then the next thing is you have to be honest about your doubts. You have to be honest with God. You have to be honest uh, with caring Christian friends, um, and you have to just be honest about it. Because until we're honest about things, things can't get. Uh, uh, 
taken care of. They can't get, um, I can't even remember, think of the word that I'm trying to think of right now. But um, when we have honest doubts, he will lead us to the truth and will set us free. Okay, so once you are honest about it, then keep doing what is right. An athlete gets out of a slump by going back to the basics. In the time of a doubt, we all have seen it, all my guys out there watching, if, um, Mike, if you're still watching, um, we've all, especially baseball players, baseball players are the worst at getting into slumps um, because we, they, for one, they play so many games. They play 162 games a year or whatever, and, and most baseball players get up to bat three or four times a game, sometimes five and six times a game, and so it's real easy for a baseball player going through the mundane process of a season to get into a slump, okay? And so when you get into a slump, you kind of start, you can kind of start to doubt yourself. And we can do that in our Christian walk too. When you can get in a slump and you can start to doubt yourself, but you have to just, for, for one, you have to get back to the basics. You have to find out, um, am I doing the basics right? And the basics in the Christian life are reading the word, staying in prayer, uh, being connected in church, living out love, living out your faith. And so when you get to where you're doing the basics, just keep doing it right, and you'll eventually break out of the slump. God will break you out of the slump. Um, and then you have to reaffirm God's truth, the truth of God's word, and subject, and this is the big thing, okay? You reaffirm the truth of God's word, but then you have to subject your emotions to the word rather than the other way around. Subject your emotions to the word of God than subject, other than subjecting the word of God to your emotions, okay? That's a deep thing to kind of, to kind of grasp, but um, basically what that means is you let this, and you take this, and you apply it to your life. You don't take your life and apply it to this, okay? Um, and then you have to develop a plan of action. If you doubt, don't just give up. Look for answers to your questions. Um, God's not afraid of questions because he already knows so you have to be willing to look for it, and you have to have faith, okay? Because you're not going to find out the answers to everything. And then you have to practice preventative care. Um, and the best, way to, the best way to stay physically healthy, and I'm talking to myself here because um, I'm the world's, world's worth at, worst at going to the doctor. The world's worst at going to the doctor and um, <laughs> preventing, having preventative physical care, okay? Um, Mike says I was in a slump just once. <laughs> Whatever. Mike, did you read what I said? Did you remember what I said about arrogance too? <laughs> just, go, just kidding, just kidding. You know, um, it's okay. We all get in slumps every once in a while. But preventative, practice preventative care. The best way to stay physically healthy is to take care of your body. We must exercise, eat well, and work on reducing stress in our lives. In the same way, we have to care for our spiritual health. Okay, and the way you do that, like I said, going back to the basics, regularly reading the Bible, consistently talking with God in prayer, maintaining a habit of regular worship, and that doesn't mean just uh, going to church. That means living out worship. Okay, that means being a devotion, not just hearing a devotion. Okay, um, and then being involved with other Christians in a group that encourages growth. It has to be a group that encourages growth, though. Um, it doesn't help to take to do all these things. And then to go to a relationship that doesn't encourage growth, okay? Um, so, every one of us will face doubts. That's just the bottom line. Um, these times can either paralyze us or they can help us grow. It just all depends on how you respond to your doubts. We can continue to play the game and pretend that everything is fine, but as we do, we will drift further and further from God. And that's exactly where that guy, from the lead singer from Hawk Nelson, got to. Okay? He started dealing with doubts, and then instead of taking care of the doubts, um, and honestly, I think he needed to get into a right, right, right relationship with Christ. I pray that he does. I still pray that he does. Um, because otherwise, there are so many people that he's going to have an influence on and lead them down a dark road that um, it's just not a good thing. Because in the Bible, it says something about people who uh, lead people astray from the word. Um, there's a stricter judgment against them. So, But... Um, we can continue to play the game and pretend everything's fine, but as we do, we drift further and further from God. Our relationship will become superficial. That's the religion instead of the relationship. So you have to make sure and work on the relationship part, not the religion part. Okay? We can bring these questions to the Lord and look for honest answers. And I believe if we do, this is, 
If we do this, our faith will be real, it'll be strong, and it'll be sure. Doubts can actually strengthen your relationship and strengthen your faith. Okay? I know we've experienced that in uh, mine and Robin's personal relationships before. And I'm sure everybody out there watching has experienced that in a personal relationship before. Doubts can actually grow you stronger if you take care of them and you take all of these steps. If you take all these practice, practical steps. Okay, God's not threatened by your questions. He's not threatened by your doubt. Because he already knows. He knows, number one, if you're in a right relationship with him or not. And if you are in a right relationship with him, then he knows what you struggle with, and he knows your doubts, and he knows the questions that cross your mind. So God's not threatened. We shouldn't be threatened either. We should just take him to him. Okay? Amen. Amen. So um, let me go ahead and pray. And if you need to get in, if you need to grow closer to God, if you're struggling with doubt for some reason, um, for one of these reasons or some other reason, feel free to reach out to us. I'm not going to do an invitation prayer right, um, right now at this time, um, but... I encourage you to get with somebody, get with a strong, a strong Christian friend, a strong spiritual friend, somebody that encourages growth, or reach out to us um, on all of our platforms, either YouTube or Facebook or whatever it is. Um, and we, good Christian people, good Christian friends, and good people that encourage growth can help you with that. Okay, um, but most of all, we can point; they can point you to God, who can help you with it all. Okay, so let me pray, and then I'll do some announcements. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you so much for your word. I thank you that we can trust all of your word, and we can trust um, just coming to you, and we can have a confidence and a boldness to come to you, um, even when we're dealing with doubt, even when we're um, dealing with um, whatever it is that we're dealing with, we can come to you, and we can boldly bring everything to you because you already know. Lord, I pray for that one out there that is struggling with their faith, Lord, I pray that um, if they are, that they can take these words um, and that your Holy Spirit mixes with them and that they can find whatever it is that's causing doubt and causing them to drift away and causing them to not be as connected to you as they should be. Um, Lord, that's your ultimate goal is that we all draw closer to you and you'll draw closer to us, Lord. I pray that on every single person watching this or that will watch this, that we can draw closer to you. Um, and that you draw closer to us. Lord, thank you for everything that you do for us. Forgive us where we fail you, and let us draw closer to you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen, amen. amen. You guys say amen. Amen. <laughs> amen. I'm talking to people online. Okay, so um, I know we've just got a few watching, but um, remember about Lifeline next week. Um, remember about the life to go. It's there's a link out there on our Facebook page. You'll, you can find it. Um, if not, if you can't find it, uh, just shoot us a comment or shoot us a message, and we'll, we can find a way to get it to you. Um, but that's just a good way to dig deeper into what we cover, okay? Um, remember youth tomorrow. You have your youth Zoom group meeting um, at 6.30. 6.30. 30 youth. So if you have youth or you know of youth, let them know. 6.30 tomorrow is the youth Zoom meeting. Um, Remember about online giving, there's the learn more button. I know you guys already know because Mike says we're, uh, we're balling when it comes to the, the lifeline giving, so which praise the Lord for that. Um, but just continue to remember that. Um, and then continue to um, stay open to next Sunday. Uh, next Sunday, early afternoon, or late afternoon, early evening. Thinking probably about three or four-ish sometime. Um, but we will definitely let everybody know when everything is finalized and when we get... Um, when we get everything finalized, basically. Um, so it's going to be a good time. I'm looking forward to it. Um, but I think that's all the announcements. Robin's not here to let me know of any more announcements. So I'm sure she'll remind me of some as she walks in the door. Um, but anyway, love you guys. Thank you guys for sticking with me and sticking with this uh, stream. And if you need somebody, if you know somebody that needs this, that's struggling with doubt, share this with them. Um, because I think this really could encourage and really could help. Um, anyway. Talk to you guys next time. Love you.